Welcome to Whiskey and Wonder. All right. Settle down, settle down. <laughs> Call in the class to order. <laughs> we are Whiskey and Wonder, where we're going to teach you something today. You're in class now. There will be a test at the end. Ah, uh, this is a test that everyone's probably going to fail. Great. Not going to lie. The, the, the Wonder segment today is one you all need to get ready to strap in for. Oh, boy. For sure. Well, that over there is Megan that's going to be administering the test. And <laughs> I'm Tyler, who is going to, along with probably all of you, be failing the test. So I'm administering the test and failing it. Okay. If that Lovely. gives you any indication to what we're doing today. <laughs> we, we are back. Another episode of Whiskey and Wonder. Um, I'm going to be frank about it. There's not anything new, no new nope. announcements. So check out the store on whiskeywonder.com if you want to get a tumbler. Other than that, we proceed as things have been. Yes. So. Onwards. That was uh, quick and easy to get through announcements today, which is good because I have a rather long portion for the uh, open segment. Okay. Um, you can find us. Uh, at whiskeywonder.com, like I said, we've got uh, a little shop there with some, uh, we're out of stickers at the moment, but we've got some um, whiskey, whiskey tumblers, tumblers. Yep. that have our logo etched in them and uh, things of that nature. Yep. So check that out. Um, check out some other stuff on whiskeywonder.com. You can see uh, past whiskeys we've done, a little bit about different types of whiskeys. You can see what we're looking to do. Um, or which whiskeys we're looking to review and stuff like that. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. Uh, just search Whiskey and Wonder. If you want to access episodes early, as in on Mondays, typically, um, and I say that because we thought about re potentially recording this on Monday, but anyway, um, if you want to access episodes typically on a Monday, uh, follow or subscribe to us at patreon.com slash whiskey and wonder. Um, if you have any feedback or anything you want to tell us or just share with us, or if you want to be a guest or, you know, tell us we suck, tell us we're great, whatever, whatever you want to say, if you want to talk to us, it's, uh, you can email us at, at contact at whiskey and .com. All this stuff will be in the show notes as well. Um, there's PayPal, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, all the links and everything I've already said will be in the show notes and the video description on YouTube. So, um, and the other thing we want to say before we jump terribly far into it today is just thank you to everyone who does donate and support and subscribes to Patreon. Um, we really appreciate it. It keeps us going. It keeps yep. the show going. It helps us get merchandise. It helps us get whiskey. It helps us just, you know, yep. it helps us do the business. <laughs> We're actually coming up on a for anybody that owns a business, you got to do good old taxes and, yep. you know, so fun stuff. Yeah. Thank you guys for everything you do. You are the reason why we are here. So. Absolutely. Thank you so awesome. much. Um, and on that note, we're going to jump just right on in. The open segment. So like I mentioned, I said I was going to have a big, long open segment and any of our longtime listeners can probably tell by the sound of my boy, my voice, I'm a little bit on edge right now. Mm -hmm. And I told Megan, as soon as I got here, she actually beat me to my house today. Yep. I was uh, sitting in my car and like the very first thing Tyler said to me was like, I'm in a bad mood. Yep. <laughs> I am not happy. My adrenaline is through the roof at the moment. Um, what, why, what happened? <clears throat> make a long story short here. And I'm going to get on a soapbox afterwards. So if you don't want to hear it after I tell what happened, skip ahead a few minutes. I went, watched the race today with some friends. Uh, Shelby was there. We went back to her house because she was nice enough to drive so that I could have a couple beers. And, you know, that was well this afternoon. I was plenty fine to drive home from her house. Um, and as I was leaving Shelby's house, I came to the intersection at the main road in her neighborhood mm -hmm. it is a four-way intersection my the the road that was i was trying to turn left onto is doesn't have a stop sign yeah and my and the road opposite me do the road opposite is a cul-de-sac so nobody, nobody turns there unless they're living there yep 
So I'm sitting there. I'm sorry. You can hear it in my voice. I'm still very, you can hear it in my breath. Yeah. That, like I'm rattling. I'm still vibrating with anger. And anyway, I'm sitting there right hand side of the road, lights on, turn signal on, trying to make a left hand turn. This prick, that's the nicest word I can use at the moment. Okay. Proceeds to turn left to go down the road I'm coming from. Okay. But okay. instead of, you know, looking where they were fucking going, they almost just ran into me headlong. I mean, they missed my car by like two inches. I mean, literally, I'm sitting there and they went and turned straight like this. Like into like not the almost, left lane, basically. Not, no, into, yeah, into where yes, I'm into sitting. Your, yeah, your into lane. my lane. Like, they didn't almost hit the left side of my car. They almost hit your straight nose. on. And it wasn't until I laid on the horn for like three seconds that they realized and they had the gall to wave to me <laughs> afterward. Was it like an, I'm sorry. It was like, oh shit, kind of oh, thing. Like, oh were, my God. At least it didn't it took, flip you off. It took every ounce. If they'd flipped me off, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> it took every ounce of resolve I had not to whip my car around and go at the very uh, least give them a few choice words. Um, yeah. So my adrenaline is sky high. I'm still not down off of that high. Um, person that's driving your fucking blue Nissan sedan over in Shelby's neighborhood. Go fuck yourself. Learn how to fucking drive and pay attention to the goddamn road. That is advice for everyone. Please pay attention to the road. And here's where my soapbox starts. Okay. So if you don't want to hear it, I suggest skip ahead minute by minute or, you know, 15 seconds or whatever your Apple let you do. The amount of training and regulation and legislation that goes into people with CDLs, pilots, locomotive engineers for the railroad, and any other, you know, bus driver, any kind of goddamn driving mm -hmm. that we have, and any fucking moron can go get a goddamn driver's license. And you don't even need a driver's license to drive. Any fucking idiot can go buy a goddamn car and just not have insurance and just drive around. The amount of regulation that we put on these other professions and we don't put that on people getting a fucking driver's license. There's something wrong with this fucking system and people need to understand that driving is a privilege, not a fucking right. It ought to be, mm, ought to be legal will. to bust people's windows if they're, if they're a shit driver like that. Anyway. I'm off my soapbox. I'm pissed. I got it out. All right. That wasn't too bad. And I, I do I, agree. I, I retained a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I held back a lot. I anyway. agree with what you said. It should be harder to get a license for hell for everything. Currently, you can get a license for it. It, it should be harder, in my opinion. There to get. are too many idiots yes. on the road killing people. Yes. That is point blank, pure and simple. Yeah. It's pretty fucking bad when you're stopped. With your turn signal, lights on, minding your own business. And you have a bright white car. Yes. And it's almost, and you almost get slammed into. Yeah. There's no excuse for that. That was somebody on their phone, fucking around. Not paying didn't, any Shouldn't attention. be driving. That's horrible. We, well, need, we need to up the public transportation system in this country, and we need to get people off the roads. You know what? Get in line for a bus pass. Get a fucking bike. Mm -hmm. I lose your fucking privilege. Uh, agreed, actually. <sighs> Something rant. we agree on. Yep. Yeah. And rant. I'm... I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I'm glad my car didn't get hit. I don't know how the fuck... I don't even... <laughs> I, I literally was so mad with rage, I couldn't tell you if this was a man or woman driving. Wow. I just, just saw the side of their face and the little That's hand funny. thing go up, and it's like, bro... I think the hand thing even made it worse. Like I get they were probably trying to apologize, but that still just made it worse in my mind. Uh, see, I would be the person trying to apologize with like, I'm sorry. I do that if I accidentally cut someone off. Yeah, and I'm I like, get that. There are multiple times where I'm like, hey, uh, my bad, my bad, you know? Especially like if I'm at a light, you know, everybody glances down at their phone at a light and maybe it changes green and for, I get a honk. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, my bad, thanks. You know, yeah. thanks for letting me know. Thanks for not... You know, that's that's a little obnoxious have, at a fucking stoplight. What am I about to ask? Have you seen the movie? No, you haven't. Um, I might surprise you. 
there is a movie that involves road rage. Oh my god, I can't remember the name of the movie now, but it's with um. Oh my god, he's so famous. Fucking shit. Uh, um, Mark Wahlberg. Nope. Damn, I took a shot. Nope. Uh, it's an older dude. He's kind of Clint Eastwood. Big. No. Mel Gibson. No. Okay. I'm Normally he plays a funny guy. He played a horrible guy in this. But anyway, I can't remember the name of it. I'm sure if I Googled for two seconds, I could. Basically, he is this psychopath who uh, is drives this big, huge-ass truck, and he's sitting at a red light um, t- trying to turn left, and this lady pulls up behind him, and he sits through the red light, and she she's having a bad day, and so she, like, lays on her horn and like just it she's really obnoxious and horrible about it um and he chases her down and like forces like forces a confrontation with her and just wants an apology and her to say he she should have just done beep beep you know just a quick like okay beep beep he she shouldn't have done like the laying on the horn like yeah. obnoxious fuck yes and she stand like holds her ground and like Bitch. <laughs> and like does not apologize and says she was in the right, he was in the wrong, and he then proceeds to kill everyone she loves. All right, that might be a little, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Like, he kills her best friend, he kills her, or he tries to kill her brother, kills her brother's significant, it's, he goes on full-on murder The proper uh, response to that, if you were the car that's, uh, you know, not the one laying on your horn, but is obviously the one in the wrong originally. Yes. Like, I feel like the laying on the horn outweighs being a few seconds behind. Yeah. Um, so the proper way to solve that is to sit there until the light turns yellow and then go <laughs> so that they get caught at the fucking light. They have to run the light or, you know, fuck them and then give them a big middle finger as you drive away. That is definitely more <laughs> acceptable than killing everyone they love. All right, that's off my chest. Moving on. Well, uh, sorry you had to deal with that. Um, I obviously did not do a solo episode last week. I tried to look for it for the flight yep. back. and I am very sorry. Uh, fully intended to. That was my plan. And uh, Daenerys had a bad fucking day and needed morphine. Uh, and I... I am the one who gives her the medicine, um, and it just was not, it was, a, it was scary. Uh, she started doing this thing now, and she's in pain, um, and it, thank God it doesn't happen very often, but when she's in pain, she gets mad at herself, and, like, she's, like, hissing and doing, like, the cat, like, Mah! thing yeah. and she's like clawing at her own face and it's heartbreaking and it's terrifying mm. and the first time I thought it, I saw it I thought I was going to personally die I burst into tears freaked out and literally gave her morphine and like 30 seconds later she was like Haha, yeah well I'm glad uh, glad she's doing better um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't bummed I, that an episode didn't get recorded but I'm very sorry um, I am fully confident on how to record a solo episode for the future. Okay. So well, that that is lovely. Um, I do have an idea that I want to talk to you about uh, after we get done. Okay. Just as far as something we've talked about in the past. Okay. So uh, the idea came to me while we were on vacation. So. Okay. I don't have a good memory, so I have no idea what. That's all right. About, I but... I don't expect you to know. It's something. I think, honestly, I think you might have floated the idea, and I think I find, might have found a way to make it happen, but, um, okay. anyway. I, I'm interested. We'll talk I, off I figured, air. I figured you would be. Yep. Um, I guess that leads into my vacation. Yes. Um. Hawaii. <sighs> there's no easy way to say this. The show almost ended. I almost didn't come back. Like stayed in Hawaii? I almost stayed in Hawaii to the point where Shelby and I were looking on Zillow at what we could afford if we sold the houses. <laughs> we <laughs> did a cost analysis on the rental property. I, the condo we were staying in and some of the other ones in there were for sale. 
looked at the prices, figured out what we were paying for a week, figured out the off season prices, kind of did a cost average and in a perfect world, I think we could make it happen to where it's paid itself off decently quickly. Um, so yeah, that was the best trip I've ever been on in my life. I wow. will be back. I will, before I die, own a property in Hawaii. Um, yeah. If it wasn't for Bo, there's a very, very, very good, oh, well, I say Bo, but Bo and Shiloh and Benson, Shelby's dogs. Um, there was a good chance that we didn't come back. Wow. You don't need a house to live out there. People were living in their cars and it's perfectly fine. Wow. Yeah. There, the temperature was perfect. You could just live, you could park your car on, on like right, right off the road by the beach and just camp in it and pitch a tent on the beach or whatever. You, you just flat out didn't need a house there. It was wow. spectacular. Um, and I say the podcast, but I said that to be dramatic. We could have still done it virtually, but you know, I mean, not if you're living in your car. Well, that's true. So but I if, think, I think Shelby and I could scrounge between oh, the, yeah. our two houses and find a place to stay but oh yeah so <laughs> the jobs. if you didn't come back i would take all the recording stuff to my house oh well yeah you know of course <laughs> i i wouldn't have any issue with that um but yeah no it, the vacation was awesome it was uh, i want to give a huge shout out to um shelby's parents for inviting us along uh, at first, even though we never in a million years thought it would happen. And then when we got lucky enough to find a very cheap flight out there, they changed their plans a little bit so that we could all stay together and help split the costs. And Nice. Oh, excuse me. And it made it very, um, uh, I don't want to say it made it necessarily easy on us, but it, it just helped us cut costs. It helped them cut costs. And we were very thankful for that. So thank you guys for letting us tag along and, and we had such a blast with them and yeah, just didn't want to come back. And, and I know, uh, I know Papa Manning, I could tell from his last day, he did not want to come back. <laughs> he was, he was basically just like, just one more day. I just want one more day. <laughs> and you know, it was, it was one of those things we took him to the airport the next morning. And then we had that day, which was Valentine's day. And then the following day, because our flight left at 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. on the 15th. And man, when we just kind of went back to our ho our, our um, condo and had a very lazy day where we just sat on the balcony and the beach and just watched the whales and just people just watched and just soaked it up. And we went, um, went to the food trucks that were right down. We had, we had talked the entire time. Uh, all four of us while we were there about going to this little food truck lot right down the road. And I, I will say um, uh, they didn't get to go, but uh, even though they had wanted to, her parents, uh, let me, let me go ahead and tell you guys if Shelby hasn't, you didn't miss much. Um, we paid $17 each for a plate of uh, Alfredo uh, from uh, uh, like an Italian food truck. And it was the blandest Alfredo I've ever had in my life. So <laughs> That was the, that was honestly probably the worst, the worst part, part of the, the trip. entire trip. Um, <laughs> and you know what? The next day we, we both woke up and went to breakfast or Shelby and I woke up and went to breakfast and we were both just kind of like, I just want one more day. <laughs> I just want one. Well, it wasn't even one more day. It was like, I just want one more night, Aww. you know, cause we knew our, our flight was leaving late that night. And yeah. so we just, ah, uh, one more day. And so we spent the day driving. We saw pretty much the rest of Maui. We, we, we saw the entire Island with the exception of two little portions of it. Um, I would highly recommend it to anybody that's never been. Did you only go to Maui? We did. We did not hop any other islands, which damn, I guess that means I got to go back. Shit. Oh man. I, I guess I'll just have to, Oh, you have I'll, to have, suffer. I'll have to suffer. Mm. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we did some really cool stuff. We went to a luau, uh, an actual luau that kind of told the history of Hawaii. We did the road to Hana, um, with, a, a, a like an app that had GPS points that would tell you cool stuff about the Island and where to see cool stuff on the road to Hana. That's um, awesome. 
we went whale watching and had whales breach right in front of us. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I got it on film and picture. Um, I, I'm not a beach person and I was just in paradise. So it was very, very hard to come back and, but life goes on. Bo says, thank you for coming back. Yes. Bo was very happy to, very happy to see me, which I learned by the way, It, it was this serious. I learned that dogs have to be uh, quarantined, I guess, for 30 days going out there. I think you can do something that reduces the time here. Like you can you can have them tested for a bunch of stuff, but if not, they have to quarantine for like 30 days. And, mm-hmm. and it's in like a vet hospital. It, you don't yeah, get to it's take in, them with it's you. It's in a kennel. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not nice. And I'm... I would never do that to my dog. I will do everything in my power to make sure he, you know, we get whatever done so that he can just go right there. But yeah, yeah, that, that was the biggest reason for us coming back. Like we just fell in love with it and wanted to stay for a little while. Um, so one day, one day when I'm a millionaire. All right. You guys hear that? Share, like, subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please, I'm begging. <laughs> Make Tyler's dreams come true. Please. If you ever go to Hawaii, if you've been to Hawaii, if you love it, like, subscribe, <laughs> tell your friends. If not, go. Help him get back there. <laughs> go. It is legitimately. I'll be the first one to tell you, I've not been a lot of places on this planet, but I have been to the Caribbean. It is better than the Caribbean. And it so far of everywhere I've been, it's the best place I've been on earth. So. All right. I would like to go. So also like, share, subscribe to all the things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Make our dream come true, please. <laughs> um, maybe one day we can, we can do this from Hawaii. Oh, but, that would be so cool. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the trip in a nutshell. The only, the only other downside to the trip actually didn't happen on the trip. Um, I will tell you guys that it is an 11 hour plane ride yep and it is worth it but that plane ride is a mother if you don't like riding long distances on planes and being cramped in economy classes is not very fun so if you can upgrade do it but easily the worst part of the trip for me personally happened after the trip and our flight left at 9 p.m hawaii time which is 2 a.m our time Mm -hmm. we got in we flew from Hawaii to Denver, Denver to Houston, Houston, back to Charlotte. We got to Charlotte about 3.30, 4 o'clock. I stayed up the entire red eye from 9 their time till we got to Denver, which it was 6.30 Denver time. Um, I watched two movies. You'd be so proud. Oh. <laughs> the one was a movie I'd already seen. Oh. <laughs> it was The Big Lebowski. I'd only seen it once before, so. That is a movie I knew you would you would see. It is. It is. It's a great movie. It grows on me. Well, I guess that's the second time I've seen it, but it's grown on me every time <laughs> I've seen it. So, um, the other one was the new Sopranos movie, which was good, but I couldn't have hear it because of the jet engine. Um, I was also the most uh, turbulent flight I've ever been on. It was very turbulent over the Pacific. Anyway. We got to fly over. I got to see, uh, I even woke Shelby up for this since she lived in the Bay Area for a while. But we got to see, as we were coming to the coast, we flew right, I mean, like 20 miles north of the Bay Area. It was so cool to see it all lit up and you could see the bay That's cool. around all the lights. It was really cool. And then you could see all the snow on all the Sierras and all the mountains and everything. But anyway, I took about an hour nap on our flight from Denver to Houston. And I stayed up from Houston to Charlotte and... I forced myself to stay up. Like I said, we got back about four and I forced myself to stay up until 9 PM. And I was like about to fall asleep at seven. So <clears throat> I was like, okay, cool. You know, I've done this before where I've gone to the West coast and I've stayed up over the red eye and it usually gets me back on East coast time pretty quick. Not, not this time. No, no. I went to bed the following evening cause I didn't have a break from work. I went to work. Like we got on home Wednesday. Wednesday. At 4 p.m., I went to bed at 9, and I had to wake up at, uh, I, I didn't have to wake up till 6.30 for work on Thursday. And I didn't have any problem waking up. 
But when I went to bed Thursday night, I laid down about 10 o'clock. I did not fall asleep until 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I had to be up the next day at 5.30. So I got about two, two and a half hours of sleep. Awful. And that was the day I had to work at the bar, (laughs) and I was up until easily 1 in the morning. So that was hard. Uh, I managed to get through it without a headache. I did... I did struggle going to Hawaii time. Um, I had a couple of headaches first couple of days, and then uh, both me and Shelby's mom had uh, some stomach issues. From we think we 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 got some like deli meats mm. to eat during the day, so we weren't going out and spending a ton of money on food. And I uh, both of us. I think we were the only two that ate the ham and both of us ended up getting a little nauseous. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so that kind of put a little bit of a damper on it, but, you know, push through and I still had a good time, so. Yep. Other than that, nothing right. else has really happened, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm ready to continue on. Like I said, we got a interesting wonder segment, so I'm actually going to have you keep a track track of the time Tyler and if it gets to the point where we're getting too long of an episode we might have to break this into two parts but okay is there any particular know. spot that's good to cut off uh, no. no okay <laughs> no <laughs> all right then well then I will put a hard timer on an hour and a half and we'll uh okay we'll see where we're at okay so, actually I'll I'll settle it down for I'll, I'll put you at I'll let you know when we've hit an hour Okay. But we're already at 26 minutes, so. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We can go a little long if we have to. All right. Opening the bottle. Well, Tyler, since you went to Hawaii, I'm guessing this was a thing. You Local. Brought, yeah, you brought back from Hawaii. It was, but I will uh, disclose. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's it, quite a bit. It's about half empty. (laughs) So I have, I, I didn't drink all of it. I promise. I just had a little bit. I shared it with my crowd that I share whiskey with from time to time. Um, So honestly, I remember drinking it, but I don't remember what exactly it tastes like. Just a heads up. (laughs) This is batch number nine. Okay. Do you know how to say the whiskey? Did you learn that when you were in Hawaii? Old Poly Road whiskey. Don't be a smart ass at the distillery. Okay, so <laughs> it is K O apostrophe O L A U. So O's make the O sound. Ah makes uh, O A makes the Ah sound, and U makes the U sound in the Hawaiian alphabet. So it's and the apostrophe is a glottal stop. I think. I think that's how you say. It. Anyway, it means you hard stop. So it's cope. Olau. Ko Olau. Ko Olau. All right. If we fuck that up, sorry. So this is uh like he said, uh da, 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 da. now I don't have the name of the whiskey anymore. <laughs> Old Poly Road whiskey. It is made in Hawaii. It is made in Oahu. Uh then at the Ko Olau uh distillery. Imagine the lush green Windward side of Oahu, where the verdant Ko'ala'u range receives more rainfall than anywhere else on the island, about 5 million gallons a day. This life-giving rainwater is naturally filtered through layers of volcanic rock for decades until it reaches the aquifer that feeds the pristine artisan well Ko'ala'u distillery uses for its spirits. Ko'alahu Distillery was founded in 2018 and is a disabled veteran-owned business. Just as our founders dedicated their lives and service to the country with the United States Marine Corps, earning honors and commendations, often at great sacrifice, they believe in earnest stewardship of our beautiful island home and its finite resources, giving back to the local community as well as the military community. And uh, it is Eric Dill, a Marine Corps veteran, and Ian Brooks, uh, are the who is also a Marine Corps veteran, uh, 
and they uh, partnered together to found this distillery. Um, because it is such a new whiskey and it is not uh, found on the mainland, you have to basically have it shipped to you from Hawaii. Um, I did not find anywhere uh, credible with tasting notes that I trusted. I found a couple of reviews, but um, none of them were websites I heard of before, and uh, I just didn't, I didn't feel it. Uh, so we're gonna. You gonna take our word for it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Unless you go to Hawaii, you're probably not getting it anyway. They um, ship. Oh, they do ship. They ship awesome. if you that, go to their okay. website. They will ship it. All right. To the states, so you can get this, assuming you're a state that allows alcohol. Unlike North Carolina, you fuckers. <laughs> um, so I've been sniffing this again. Um, I definitely get a a florally apple out of it. I I don't know if I'm. I get wood, so there's definitely like a cereal grain in there. The floral and I definitely get floral. It definitely overpowers the apple. There's definitely floral, but I'm going to argue with you that the apple you're smelling is not apple. And I'm saying this just because it's a whiskey out of Hawaii. I think it's pineapple. Probably. I think it's more acidic and a little bit more. It's more sweet than a typical apple. It smells more acidy. Pro well, I'm cheating uh you want me to spoil yeah at least from what i remember i didn't taste any fruit in this <laughs> at all so the smell okay. is very different from the taste okay but i'm getting wood chips pineapple and definitely floral flowers very tropical i get a hint of cereal grain like you mentioned as well um but the overpowering thing for me is the floral yeah I agree. Definitely the floral. All right. Well, All right. there ain't nothing that we know we're supposed to be smelling, so down the hatch she goes. Oh, wow. That is an interesting taste when it first hits your tongue. Yep. Um, So much so that I'm going to have to taste it again to give you any real description other than the fact that it was very interesting. The burn is non-existent. What uh, proof is this, Tyler? Does it say on the bottle? Because it's like... Oh, yeah, that's right. It went um, down like water. This is 86 proof, so it's only 43% alcohol. Um, and it ran me on Maui. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'll just tell you. I paid fifty-four or $55 for this. I saw it in a couple places. Uh, some were as high as $65, $70, but that store was high on everything if that makes sense um so you know if i don't i don't know how much the website's charging for this but at a at a convenience store i saw this several times for about 55 dollars which makes me think you probably could get it for 50 direct from direct from the uh distiller I think that was about ac accurate. Um, I know their bourbon, which is a limited release, um, was seventy nine ninety nine, and this was about twenty dollars cheaper, if I rem am remembering correctly. So, okay. Um, initially, that initial taste is very, very clean. It's very crisp. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's very, very much the floral. I I was gonna say it's very tropical tasting. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I, I, it makes me think of, um, I mean, God, it makes me think of a pina colada when I first taste it. Um, I don't know if it is coconut and pineapple or if it's just that kind of experience. Um, I, I don't get any fruit on this. Maybe, maybe a small hint towards the end, but I just, no, it, it honestly, for me, it kind of skips over. It's very bland right on the tongue. It's just cold. It's cold, it's, but I so disagree. It is taking another sip and letting it linger there. It is coconut, pineapple, and cream, like a buttery cream. Really? Yes. Um, 
And then that transitions into a more traditional whiskey where you get, you know, your cereal, your cereal grain, your woody, oaky um, I, flavor on the back end. I put it under my tongue and I've been getting this sweet flavor that's lingering in my mouth afterwards. And it, when I put it under my tongue, it exploded that sweet flavor out of it. Um, it's very butterscotch flavored would be the way I described that. But it is definitely, definitely transitions. It's got, for me, it's got a minimal, it's got, you said the burn's not existing. It's got it, a burn. It's just very minimal. Yeah. I um, mean, it's the same burn you'd get from a beer, like to me. It's, um, yeah, no, it's more than that to me. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's a very mild burn. Okay. It's, somewhere in the winter green spectrum, I feel like maybe just not a very strong winter green. Okay. Um, and then it's got, you know, your oaky woody kind of mid to, to, uh, finish. But like I said, it, every once in a while, depending on how I do it, it kind of shoots a flavor of sweet and butterscotch, maybe a little hint of vanilla. Okay. I'm, uh, I like what you're putting down, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to pick it up. Okay. Um, cause I, I'm sticking with coconut, pineapple, um, cream and, uh, some sort of wood, um, woody, oaky, wood chippy, okay. pencil-y. Well, I will disclose my, my palate may be a little, uh, fucked contaminated at the moment i've been drinking uh dr love i had two dr loves and a raspberry some kind of raspberry sour beer that somebody gave me it was good too um, i didn't know you liked dr love i thought you didn't like it oh. i like dr love it is just not my favorite it's not it's like out of the sours that they've done it's mm -hmm. number three there are two other sours that are higher on the list. Okay. But right. when it's basically the only, well, there's, there's two sours, but the other sour is at the moment has mango and passion fruit, two flavors I absolutely can't stand. Oh, so that sounds so good. It, if you like that, it, it is delicious. I'm not a fan of either of those flavors and I've I had it and it's, it. it's, I, I will say this about it. I do, I can drink it because it's, the most tart sour that I think uh, our brewer has made. Um, so I do like that aspect of it, but the actual, as far as the fruit flavors, mm. just not my, not, not two fruit flavors that I enjoy. All right. Well, so. that's not about whiskey at all, but nope. uh, anyway. Yep. Like I said, so take, take uh, my, my stuff with a grain of salt. I've been drinking a beer that's flavored like a chocolate cherry cordial yep. most of the day. So, all right, Tyler. We'll we got to move on. It's time for the wonder segment. All right. Uh, trying to figure out how to start this, this wonder segment was very hard. Um, it is very rare, for me anyway, to read about an unsolved mystery and have zero idea on what happened. Typically, I tend to agree with one of the solutions sleuths have come up with over the years. But for today's wonder segment, I have no idea. All of the popular theories seem just as plausible as each other, and I can see any of them being accurate, or maybe a combination. I've spent a couple of weeks reading everything I can find, and I've listened to at least half a dozen different podcasts, and I'm still just as stumped now as I, won when I, as I was when I first heard about this case. Um, in fact, I was waiting for Tyler to get here. I was in my car reading somewhere else about this case, so it has fully grabbed me and dragged me down this rabbit hole where I have just spent the last couple of weeks 
reading everything I can, and I am just as unsure today as I was two weeks ago when I first started researching it. And here's where I'm going to struggle how to title this. Most places call this case The Lost Girls of Panama, but I'm going to be honest, that feels too vague and even insulting to the indigenous women of Panama that go missing every year because these two girls are Dutch. They were tourists in Panama. So I could go with the lost Panama tourists, which is accurate, if again, a little vague, because it isn't like these are the only tourists that never returned home from vacationing in Panama. But the stinger of this case is the photos. And I'll obviously go further into this in this episode, but one reason this case gained worldwide notoriety is because their camera was found with some very strange photographs that most likely detailed the girls' last days of life or some of their last experiences. And That doesn't sound good. Yeah. And though they were indeed lost for most likely several days, they aren't exactly lost anymore or... Parts of them aren't lost, which you can infer to mean that this is a mystery that involves the deaths of two Taurus. So I think I'm going to need Tyler's help naming this episode because best I've got is the mysterious deaths of the Dutch Taurus in Panama and what their camera tells us. And holy hell, that is a mouthful. Yeah, I'm not typing all that as the episode <laughs> name. We're going to call this the Panama Disappearances. Okay, note to Tyler, help me name this wonder segment because yikes. <laughs> Yeah, Panama disappearances. Okay, and now that I've successfully written one whole tangent, let's dive right in. Lisanne Froon and Chris Krimmers were two young women from the Netherlands. Froon was 22 and Krimmers was 21. The two friends had moved in together only a few weeks prior to their trip to Panama, and they'd worked together at a cafe. The girls had both recently graduated college, and in celebration, and after six months of saving, they were going to spend a few weeks in Panama to volunteer as a type of social worker to help children while simultaneously learning Spanish. There's some confusion with if either of the women knew Spanish before their departure, but from what I can tell, they had a rudimentary knowledge and decided exposure would be the best way to become fluent. Well, that's what they say about any any language. The best way to learn it is to immerse it's yourself in the there. culture. Yep. They left the Netherlands in March of 2014 and spent a couple of weeks touring the country of Panama before heading to their host's house in Boca Tech, where they would begin their volunteer work. But when they first got to Boca Tech, the school they had signed up to to volunteer with was not ready for them and suggested the girls take a few more days to do touristy things before they could begin their volunteering. Lisanne and Chris decided they would stick around Bocatet and see the sights. Sendero El Pianista, or the Pianist Trail in English, is one of the hiking trails that is popular amongst tourists. From everywhere I've read, this is a scenic hike through the cloud forest of Bocatet. A cloud forest is a type of rainforest that sits at an elevation of between 3,000 and 8,000 feet, called such because a layer of clouds exists in the canopy pretty much year-round. One more thing I saw, not only from my research on this case, but from literally every single tourism site I visited to learn more about Bocatet, is that it is highly recommended that you hire a guide when you are hiking. Why? Because without a local, it is extremely easy to get lost and confused because you're in a fucking rainforest and there is all sorts of exotic and toxic flora and fauna. The trail is not paved and is easily hidden if you aren't sure what you're looking at. Though the Pianist Trail is rated between easy and moderate, it can connect into some very extreme terrain and quickly turn from a leisurely afternoon to a hardcore workout that some people take months of their lives to train for. One review on TripAdvisor, published in January of 2022, included several photos of forks on the trail and which path you are meant to follow. I can see it 
easily becoming confusing, and I'll show Tyler the pictures. I encourage anyone to curious to Google Sendero El Pianista TripAdvisor to take a look yourself. And I am now going to pull up this link for Tyler to check out. Before we go much further, will you do me a solid favor? Yeah. Will you move that microphone down a smidge, like tilt it towards you? Remember we were having... Yeah, I'm trying to talk yeah. over it. No, you're fine. I that, I was that is good right there. Okay. All right. So, Tyler, I'm going to hand you my tablet laptop. Tab top. My tab top. Oh, I just squished my fingers. All right. And there... Oh, fucking hell. I just clicked a key. Oh, no. Fuck. I oh, lost no. it. Okay. Here's TripAdvisor. I just broke it. Uh-oh. All right. I don't want to touch it. TripAdvisor. There you go. And then... Scroll through the pictures um, on that TripAdvisor site. So these are forks in the trail? Yes. And as you scroll, there's like, they'll put an X, like, don't go that way, but go this way. This was from January of this year. So like just a couple of weeks ago, this current review was published. Um, and to me, some of the places where they put an X, don't go this way, looks like the way you should go. So I definitely agree without a guide. I would be totally going the wrong way. Oh, my Lord. Stop. Uh -oh. This thing is like, I'm trying to click through and it keeps popping something up. So I see, um, I definitely see in the first one, uh, and I, I can, well, so the first one with an X because that's the second picture. Yeah. I definitely see how that one's confusing. The other one. Not so much, you don't think? It's confusing in the fact that the one with an X is a dirt road. That is a little bit confusing, but there is a distinct trail that okay. goes off to the left. So I'm not saying I would make the right decision necessarily, but I can tell what's a like car I can definitely path. tell one's a car path and one's a walking path. Yeah. I don't, you know, people might walk down car paths though. Yeah. So that's, uh, just one of the interesting things about this trail um, and dating back all the way from every tourism site I could see, like even before these girls went missing, it says, you know, you need to hire a guide to do any of this. And this review uh, concludes with, quote, the trail ends at the Mirador with the remembrance monument of the two Dutch girls. Please don't go past this point without a guide for your own safety. End quote. Turn your ass around. Basically. And Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon hired a guide to take them up the Pianist Trail on April 2nd of 2014. And it is estimated that the trail can take anywhere between three and eight hours to complete, depending on the site you look, how fast you're moving, blah, blah, blah. However... For some unknown reason, the girls decided to head up the trail a day early and without a guide on 11 a.m. on April 1st, 2014. Smart. There are reports that the girls first had brunch with two other Dutch tourists, both male, before heading to the trailhead. Though this does appear to be true, it seems like the law has ruled out any involvement of these two men in Froon and Kremer's disappearances, and they aren't really ever mention again but i will just for accuracy mention that they did have brunch with two other tourists before leaving the women had dressed lightly for the hike that morning they wore tank tops shorts and hiking boots and their pack only contained enough for a sh for the short trip that they planned to be gone for the host family's dog joined them on their hike and the first sign of trouble was when that evening blue returned home without the Taurus. Originally, the host family were not concerned. They figured the girls, being college-aged, had decided to check out the party scene and would return later in the evening. And here is where I first questioned the Dutch Taurus. I want to know where they were when Blue decided to turn around. Had they already run into trouble? Did Blue leave off early onto the trail and romp about like a dog for a bit before returning home empty-handed? Or did the dog take them all the way to the Mirador and they chose to ignore his departure or something else entirely? Every source I've looked at does mention that the dog went with them, 
but it ha- cannot be confirmed that he was actually there as there are no photos of the dog on the camera uh, that is later recovered. So everywhere says that the dog was there when they first went on the trail, but they never took pictures of the dog. The trail guide became concerned on April 2nd when the girls did not show for their scheduled departure, and he went to the host family's house to check in on them. There, he discovered that they had never returned home the previous evening. At the same time, in the Netherlands, Lee Stan and Chris's parents were becoming worried because they had not received any check-in texts or calls, both of which both girls had been religious about sending. Local guides began to search the trails around the Baru volcano for the girls almost as soon as their hired guide realized they were missing. Police officially became involved the next day, April 3rd. And on April 6th, both girls' families arrived in Bocatet to join the search, and they brought the Dutch authorities with them, including Dutch sniffer dogs. Despite the sniffer dogs, aerial searches, and numerous volunteers coming through the rainforest, the girls were not found, and it seems as though they disappeared without a trace. Their distraught parents returned to the Netherlands and held on to hope that they'd hear something about their girls. And it was 10 weeks later, on June 14th, when a local indigenous woman from the Nagabe, sorry for that pronunciation, I'm sure, tribe found a blue backpack sitting in a spot she walked past several times a day near Alta Romero. Romero. This is a 12-hour hike by foot from the Continental Divide where the girls should have summited. She was sure that the backpack had not been there before, and she went and turned it into the police. It turns out that this was the pack the girls had taken with them on their hike, and it was in very, very good condition, as well as all the contents inside, which were the equivalent of $63 in cash, two pairs of sunglasses, two bras, or potentially swimsuit tops, that's been debated back and forth, a water bottle, Lisanne Froon's passport, Lisanne's camera, Lisanne's Samsung Galaxy S3, and Chris Krimmer's iPhone 4. And Tyler, this is what the contents of the pack looks like as well as you can see the pack in there this is 10 weeks in the rainforest i don't want to make light of the situation but that's way back in the day the samsung galaxy 3 i had one of those my first smartphone ever (laughs) so every the pack looks pristine condition i i Mm. i I don't feel confident saying that um, because this picture is, number one, it's grainy. Mm-hmm. I can clearly make out two two pairs of sunglasses, a uh, what looks like a camera battery, what looks like a SD card for a camera. I mean, you can see the backpack, but it's like unzipped and you can't really see the outside of it. So I don't know if I could say it's in pristine condition from seeing that. Okay. Uh, the inside looks to be in pristine condition. Uh, there is a water bottle there. I just realized that's what that was though. Uh, there's like a little pouch. I'm assuming that holds like a little black kind of fanny pack looking thing. I'm assuming held the money and passports and camera and shit. Um, and frankly, the, as far as the bras go, like one looks like a bra, but the other looks like a swimsuit top. Yeah. <laughs> so go figure. Yep. The, the one is, navy blue the bra is like navy blue and the the swimsuit one is like got flowers on it it looks like yeah, yeah so it it's, that's been debated if they're their bras if they're swimsuits what what those were also i don't not to play de- detective or anything but i don't know many women that hike in bras that like i mean this looked like a bra like a brazier like something you would wear day to day i don't yeah. know many women that hike in those usually it's a sports bra yeah something so, comfortable You know, I don't know. Maybe it's all they had, but I'm not trying to play detective. I'm just trying to spell it out for the people listening and watching. people? I do this for you. (laughs) 
So, uh, and I will say, Tyler, uh, fairly soon, I'm going to have you Google some stuff because okay. there are 90 photos I want you to look at. Oh, fuck. And I was not going to put them all on the Word document because then it'd be 50,000 pages long. Yeah, that's fine. And just let me so know. I got just, Google. Yeah, just have Google ready. So, finding the backpack reignited the search for the missing girls. And Tyler's headset just fell off his head because he leaned back. And so I'm um, talking, killing time for him to get it back on. Oh, oh, he put it on the wrong way. There we go. Now it's the right way. It, it's <laughs> fine. I can still hear you even though the headset fell off. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're right here next to each other. <laughs> Listen. Stupid ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't hold that oh, one in. Oh, I am uh, an idiot. That's all right. <laughs> We've all been there. An idiot. And, and I am turning red. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> pretend none of that just happened. Oof. Finding the backpack reignited the search for the missing girls. But before I get into that, I want to talk about the contents of the backpack, specifically the phones and the camera. Mm -hmm. And I hope all of you listening understand military time because I'm about to go over the records pulled from the girls' phones. That's all right. I can translate. Okay. Shortly after beginning their hike on the first day, April 1st, at 1639, that is four. No, that's two thirty. Nine. <laughs> Wait. It's two. No, I'm sorry. No, it's it is not. Four. It is four. It is four. Sorry. Four thirty nine. You're supposed to be the translator. Yeah. Well, I got there. <laughs> so at sixteen thirty nine, Chris's iPhone attempted to call one one two. One one two is the Dutch emergency number. It's their equivalent of R nine one one. Lisanne's Galaxy made an attempt for 112 at 1651. That's 451. <laughs> there was no signal, and so the calls did not go through. On April 2nd, the Galaxy attempted 112 again at 0658, and the iPhone attempted at 0814. That's in the regular time. That's <laughs> like 6 and 8 in the morning. And was followed by the Galaxy at 10.52 in the morning. When the Samsung didn't connect with 112, a call was placed to 911 immediately after. 911 is the emergency number in Panama. And at this point, when none of the calls went through, both, fo both phones were turned off, probably to conserve battery. And then at 13.50, or 1.50, the Galaxy turns on for a moment to check signal and then turns back off. Another signal check is attempted at 1619. It remains on the rest of the night and is turned back off on April 3rd at 0736. It remains off all of the third. The iPhone attempts one emergency call to 911 at 0932 and then checks signals but does not attempt a call at both 1147 and 1559. On the fourth, the Galaxy is turned back on to check signal, once at 0450, and again 10 minutes later at 5 a.m. Then the Galaxy battery dies, and there is no further usage from Froon's Samsung Galaxy S3. The iPhone checks signal twice on the fourth, once at 1016 and again at 13.42. That's 1.42. And here a pattern emerges as the iPhone turns on around the same time for a couple of days for signal checks. The 5th at 10.50 and 13.37. The 6th at 10.26 and 13.37. And from that second attempt on the 5th, every time the phone turned on a wrong PIN number was entered, and the phone remained locked. On the 6th, it was turned on again at 1026, and then again at 1337. And remember, several incorrect PIN attempts were made while the phone was on during each check. So now this is three days in a row where the phone has either turned on at the exact same time or within a few minutes of the same time for a check. With incorrect With incorrect pins pen, each time? Yes, incorrect pin you entered every time. Then from the 6th, 
the phone remained off for several days until April 11th, when it was switched on at 10.51. It remained on for an hour and five minutes before being turned off at 11.56. Despite the phone having 22% battery life remaining, it never turned back on. For some reason, the day of the hike, the girls realized something was wrong, but we have no idea what. There's, of course, several theories. There are photos of the girls happily at the summit of their initial hike, and it is assumed that maybe, instead of turning back, they decided to continue onto the harder trail where they came across a monkey bridge, and perhaps one of them fell off and became, and became injured. And a monkey bridge is a basically like rope, man-made rope bridge um, that you cross. You can pull up pictures. on. Yeah, Google we've probably know. all seen it in movies. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, others say that maybe one of the girls was bitten by a venomous snake while hiking. And there are several snakes in the Panamanian jungles that can be deadly. One is the fur de lance or the spearhead viper. This is the most common snake found in Boca Tet. And it releases 105 milligrams of venom per strike, per, vi- per bite. Only 50 milligrams is needed to fatally kill an average human. And it tends to start, you tend to be gone after an hour. I'll take this moment to interrupt and say we have hit the hour mark. Okay. But let, let's... We, don't, we don't need to stop now. I'm just giving you an update. We can, we can go a little long if we need to. Okay, let's keep going. I might be able to get this all done. It is estimated that this might be the snake that has killed the most humans, but there are several conflicting scientists who say, no, it's the snake, no, it's the snake. But the Fleur de Lance, needless to say, is a very, very dangerous, very deadly snake. And it is just one of over 20 species of venomous snake living in Panama that the girls could have encountered, plus all of the other rainforest creatures that they could have encountered. Another thing that's odd is how only incorrect pen numbers were entered after the fifth. Why? Had Chris, the owner of the iPhone, passed away without telling Lizanne her pen? Or did a stranger have the phone by that point? Or was it turning on somehow a glitch because it was turning on the same time every day and it just so happened it was like just you know early smartphones were kind of wonky it's one of the many questions raised in this case but not the one that drew the most attention and speculation this case got worldwide recognition because of the camera found in the backpack was Lizanne Froon's camera and several photos that sparked amateur sleuths all over the world to gather and discuss. And here, Tyler, I will say you probably want to Google um, Lisan Froon. How do you spell that? L I S A N N E F R O O N. F R O O N. And Chris K R S. Chris Kremers. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, photos basically, and there'll be all sorts of sites that pull up all sorts of their different photos that were there. Yeah, I saw uh, <laughs> Google filled in with uh, Lee Sanfroon and Chris Kremers solved, <laughs> and naturally I clicked on it, and um, it didn't have a solution. Um, Sadly, not, not currently. <laughs> not as of let's see February if I can, 20th, 2022. Let's see if I can find these pictures. All right. Nope, no pictures there. Um, Reddit links probably might be the best bet because the Reddit Reddit's like where shit is at, you know. I do. I don't see any Reddit links coming up though. Oh, did you put like you looked at solved? Put photos. No, I put photos. Oh, I well, searched photos. Shit. See if any of the Reddit ones come up. There are. Um... Well, let's just type Reddit. Yeah, that might help. All right, let's see. So I should pull up some of the pictures at least or have links to some of the pictures. Took me to an imager site. Okay, that's All a, right. Okay, yeah. 
these are the pictures of them happy and Yep, they look like they're on a trail. Okay, you probably hiking. are at a good place. Do I need to stop scrolling? No, you can scroll okay. through all of them. So, in 2014, cell phone cameras weren't as good as they are today, and though they they were definitely getting there. Oh my. But still, most people had a point and shoot camera that they took with them on vacations or to special events, blah blah blah. And there are several happy pictures taken on April 1st. Selfies and typical vacation shots. And according to the camera timestamp, it appears that they reached the Continental Divide around 1 p.m. on April 1st. And then the photos continue through the early afternoon. Experts of the area have studied the photos uploaded after the summit and have com- concluded that the girls must have continued onward onto the more treacherous trails the ones not kept up by rangers and used by guides, but instead the trails the girls most likely went to explore are used primarily by the tribes of the area and are not recommended for tourists to explore. And then there are no further photos on the camera until April 8th, a full week after the girls first went missing. And then between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., 90 flash photographs were taken, all appearing to be relatively in the same area. Most photos show damn near total blackness, some shrubbery, vague impressions of what might be a ravine or river. There are four photos in which we can see something other than the darkness. In one, there appears to be a bunch of toilet paper or like paper towel or something Um, and maybe like candy wrappers or some sort of foil surrounding a piece of a mirror on a rock. Okay, I just found a Reddit thread with all of the photos. I will chime in and say, okay, so I'm going through. Oh, what the fuck? (laughs) Oh, okay. Nope, that is not. Oh, that's a dog that's about to fuck that groomer up. <laughs> Tyler got distracted. Uh, I clicked next, <laughs> thinking it would take me to to more pictures, and instead it took you to yeah, page. it took me to something different. It, it it's got like five pictures on here, and then it it stops, kind of stops, yeah. But, um, but those are new pictures too, so they're all like them happy and yeah. Damn it! I need you to find the ninety photos. Uh, let, me, um, let me see if I can, or even just the four photos of them. I did see some of the. Some of the dark photos. Yeah. There's four photos in the darkness. I didn't see any with toilet paper. It's hard to tell what it is. Um, It's like scraps, and it's kind of a weird angle. Um, But it clearly looks to be something placed intentionally. There is a mirror in the center. Um, So there's that photo, and then there's another similar photo that... uh, What? is a picture of a branch with some pieces of red plastic uh, tied to it. Um, The red plastic almost looks like dog poop bags. Yeah, I saw Um, that one. Um, Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to... (laughs) I'm really trying to find... uh, Here we go. 90 unexplainable. Okay, so... Well, I am so sorry. No, it's fine. Um, I included these for you. I wonder if I have... A link... Yeah, um, oh, I have this website that went into some serious sleuthing. Uh, are you on Discord by chance? Nope. Well, I can be. If you want to hop on Discord, I can link this to you real quick. If I can, hold, please. Okay, you there do that. Yep. I'm nope. attempting I'm, to. I'm coming, coming to Discord now. Okay, um, and. So these photos, it's hard to tell why they were taken, um, what in the hell they were doing with them, um, things of that nature. I'm trying to find your name. Uh, it is very hard. There, there is That's a, what she said. There we go. Did you get that? It's, um, I haven't been on Discord in a minute, so it's it's updating. Okay. Um. Give me, okay. give me, oh, uh, there it goes. It's starting to go. Okay. Um, so it appears as if most of these 
photos were kind of taken pretty fast, like in se- like succession to each other. Um, and they're like totally black photos with dots. Um, and the dots could be, uh, it could be rain, it could be bugs, it could be just issues with the flash. There's all sorts of weird things. Uh, so those photos are not, we can't. This is the, this glean a whole lot. This is a bunch of photos to like overlapping. Yes. Scroll down. This person like went. Okay. Super yeah, that's in that's depth rain in the, in the rainforest. Like that doesn't take a genius to figure out. Yeah. Um, going down, down, down. You'll get to where there's a picture of hair. Uh, oh yeah. This is a very large website. Oh, it's very long. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is a yeah, like okay, camera. Okay, perfect. So that's one of the photos that you can see. Um, this is the fourth photo uh, that you can see, and it is perhaps the most disturbing because it shows an extreme close-up of Chris Krimmer's distinct strawberry blonde hair. Yep. The complete image has never been released, but reports say that blood can be seen at Chris's temple. And it appears as if this photo is taken like from behind. So at this point, we are assuming that there is another person probably taking this photo of Chris's hair. Um, and we don't even know if this was intentional. Um, so there's the two photos with like the trash on them. Basically, we aren't sure if the girls are trying to tell a story with it um, or why they're taking those pictures. There's the picture of Chris's hair. And then there is a third photo uh in the sequence that shows a rock formation with a drop. Some claim that this is a, that a like blurry image in the upper right corner of the photo is a body. Um, And I have like a body of their friend that fell and died. Um, And I've tried to see, uh, because I've looked at this photo obviously, and I've tried to see if it is indeed maybe a body. Um, and I just, it's so blurry. It's so hard to tell. I really can't, I can't say, um, if this is a body or not. So, um, I am... I don't know which photo you're talking about. There's these photos are so scattered all over the place. On yeah. This website. Um, um, I will see if I can find that exact photo. Um, but I'm not positive. Um, let's see. It, so, uh, it starts by showing a bunch of this website, a bunch of photos of rain in the rainforest, frankly. Um, then these people have taken um that didn't come through uh these people have taken and enhanced these photos they've played with the exposure and okay that one did oh that photo okay yeah they think in the top right hand corner that like kind of blurry thing is a body like someone uh someone's body like hanging off like dead off this cliff um and I can see how they see it as a body, um, but I don't, I don't, I think it's the human brain being the human brain and trying to see something uh, when there's nothing there. I think it's just a rock. Um, there's a bunch of pictures of her hair. Yeah, this a person bunch. is, the who did that website I sent you was trying to analyze like, yeah. If there's blood there, how that angle was achieved, blah, blah, blah. They went really deep into all sorts of shit. Um, uh, and again, they're... I highly encourage everyone to please uh, Google these photos. Um, there is a blog that does this case some pretty, but pretty good justice uh, that is called the cases that haunt me dot home dot blog. Um, and it's a WordPress blog. And this person wrote 
pages and pages on uh, this case. Um, and you can, they have the photos uploaded there, at least the, you know, the ones that are the most visible. Um, now, Tyler, you know how, like, in cameras, when you take a picture, the file on the camera is, like, IMG underscore 10, IMG underscore 100. Like, it counts how the photo as you take it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you delete a photo, like, that number is gone. Yes. There is a photo that is missing. And... Uh, that is photo number 509. Um, the pictures go from 508 and jump to 510. And no one knows what happened to 509. Um, and why the girls deleted it. Because clearly in their vacation photos, they were not deleting pictures that were of shitty quality. Um, so people question whether uh, a stranger who had the camera deleted this photo or what this was. Now, um, the camera they were using is a Canon Power Shot, which takes video. Um, and they had plenty of room on the memory card and plenty of battery left on the camera that they could have taken video, but instead were choosing to just take pictures. Um, and again, that's another thing people question, like, why, why in the hell are they just taking photographs, basically, instead of, you know, recording a message for whoever finds it or whatever. Um, and people are saying that's a dead body. I yeah. just, so I just took this photo and I screenshotted it on my phone. I have a Photoshop program on there um, for editing pictures and brightened. I, I increased the exposure mm -hmm. and changed the contrast and it just looks like a freaking leaf. Like a, yeah, like a, a rock limb or of a plant. Yeah. People think that that might be um, uh, at this point it would be Lee Sands body and Chris. No, Chris. It's yeah. I forget which one they say might've died first. It just, I don't think it's, hmm. I don't think it's uh a body, to be honest. Um, so, missing 509, um, and then they find this backpack that apparently just kind of appeared there uh, 12 hours away from where they should have been hiking. Um, and basically, there's two main theories uh, that either this has been a horrible, horrible accident, or there's been foul play involved. And that's where I kind of am stumped. Uh, now, after they find the backpack and it reignites the search, uh, they start uh, using that uh, local tribe to help them search. And with the help of the tribe, they find several human bone fragments. Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, I am so sorry, guys. I closed my Word document, so I'm now going off memory, and that's a bad idea. Uh, what time are we at, out of curiosity? We are at an hour and 19 minutes. Mm. Okay. So, uh, I... from what I see in these pictures, these girls were definitely on some sort of, well, let me rephrase that. Whoever took these pictures is on some sort of ledge. There's a giant rock here and what appears to be uh, <clears throat> something wet. I don't want to say it definitively that it's moving water uh, because it could easily be just the camera flash reflecting off of wet trees if it just rained uh, over this rock. So. I, yeah, I don't really know, but it, it appears they were near a giant rock. Yeah. Um, hmm. 
so one of the theories um, against it being foul play is the fact that if they were kidnapped or, you know, they were with some sort of killer or whatever, um, why do they have access to their phones and cameras if it is them logging onto their phone, taking these cameras? Um, some people think that these photos and this flash is actually they're trying to scare away some sort of wild animal um, that cannot be seen in any of the photos, but um, that there might be some sort of night predator that was stalking them on uh, April 11th and that they were um, using the flash basically as like a fire wave to try to get the thing to stay away from them. Um, but you would expect there would be some sort of capture of the animal if it was an animal. Um, now, when these human remains were found, uh, they did do several like forensic tests and discovered that the remains were both um, belonged to both girls. Yeah, yeah. Huh. You might have mentioned this earlier while I was looking at the pictures, um, but there was a picture of some some of the bone recovered it looked like and uh i might spoil something lizanne's foot yeah yeah so uh one of the things found uh in the later searches is lizanne foon's foot still attached uh like they're still in the boot yep uh, which was from what i read said that it was still uh, or it was a I don't want to say certified, but it was a boot made and purchased in uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the foot still had skin um, and it did have some flesh uh, attached to it, according to the forensic uh, anthropologist that looked at it. Um, and basically that the foot is consistent with the level of decomposition one would expect for being 10 weeks after uh, death. However, uh, they found a broken pelvis bone uh, that forensic determined was Chris Krimmer's, and it, in contrast, had zero uh, flesh or skin or anything attached to it, and it appeared to be bleached. Uh, and this is a big issue that a lot of have people have with the oh it was an accident thing is how these bones became bleached um one medical examiner said that the bleaching of the pelvic bone was consistent with uh using lye or lime um which drug cartels and serial killers and all sorts of people have used uh to dispose of evidence and remains throughout history um so other hikers who have perished in the rainforest or even in the river um, have been found almost completely intact, even those who were dragged to death uh, in the river, uh, as the Panama authorities claim that that's what happened to Chris and Lizanne is there was a flash flood, they get, got swept into the Serpent River, uh, and that is how they died. Uh, authorities say that their remains were probably scattered by animals, but there is no evidence of bite marks, scratch marks, or any animal activity on any of the bones that were found. Um, and I forgot the photo um, that was deleted, photo 509, um, was deleted by a computer um, because law enforcement attempted to recover the photo uh, and it appeared they were not successful um, and it appears that the photo was deleted by a computer which means someone took the camera into technology and plugged into a computer to delete whatever 509 was 
So maybe that photo contains some sort of evidence of a perpetrator or um, who knows what that photo contained. Um, the bone fragments they found contained the remains of several indigenous women as well. So they found all these bones basically scattered in the same area that did have Lisanne and Chris's remains, but on top of that, there was like uh, I see reports of twelve up to twenty-three um, indigenous individuals there as well. Um, Anybody ever asked these indi- indigenous people if they, uh, you know, made sacrifices? And that is one of the theories. There are uh, pygmy cannibals in the Panama forests. And um, one of the sites I read went into detail on how one of the pictures of when the girls are happy after they've crossed the summit looks like they could be in some sort of near some sort of like man-made um, ritual area because of like some stuff like kind of looks like might be hanging in the trees. Um, and this is just some dude in their basement which is why i didn't include this in my research uh officially but there's so much to this case um and so many questions and uh, i don't know um because all most likely this was somehow a tragic accident. Um, I think most of the evidence just points to, you know, um, they got lost and, you know, the elements took them. I don't, but at the same time, there's those weird questions of like, well, why is photo 509 gone? Was it a glitch with the camera or what? There, I don't know. I so don't know and it bugs me. Um, and there is a book I actually, uh, it is called, um, it's on my wish list because I'm going to read it. Uh, Lost in the Jungle. And Lost in the Jungle, The Mysterious Disappearance of Chris Crimmers and Lisa Ann Froon. Uh, and it's supposed to be a very in-depth uh, and well-researched look at the case. Oops, sorry. And at the end, it states that all the evidence this person did, or these people did, these journalists, this was just a horrible accident. That's what everything this book says points to. Um, but then you look at other things, and you're like, well, there's just so much that we don't know. Well. Consider this on my list of things to learn after I die. Because yes. I will never know in this lifetime. But I think I can safely conclude uh, roughly what happened. What What do you think, Tyler? Fucking white people got involved in some shit they shouldn't have been involved in. <laughs> so white you, people in the damn jungle. So <laughs> you think that they were taken by a no, I think tribe? They, no, or... I think they were just some white people in the jungle, whether they that didn't know how to survive in the jungle, whether they were bit by a snake or fell and injured themselves or were captured by a tribe like that. Just, they shouldn't have been there and they, they were been there and they were, and okay. they weren't prepared and tragedy befell. I don't know what form it took, but you know, I just, that's, it's sad, but that, that's what I can conclude happened. And you know, Tyler, I think, of all the theories and everything, I I agree with what you just said the most. Yeah, it's those it's, women shouldn't have gone on the trail on their own that day. Yep, they should have waited to the next day. They should have gone with their guide. Um, and whatever happened was most likely something that was incredibly preventable. Um, had they been just a little more responsible. And yep. I hate I hate to speak uh, ill, of the, Ill of the dead. Yeah. Um, because it, it it is heartbreaking that they're gone. Um, they were young and in the prime of their life and had just graduated and we're going to do some really good social services stuff 
Um, yep. At just is. Um, I am. I I love being outdoors. I love camping and hiking and being in nature. Um, and I am not going to sit here and tell you I know what I'm doing. Uh, when I'm out there, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know, but I think it's safe to say that I know more than the average person. Uh, and I still wouldn't feel comfortable going to places like this without a local. And I mean, it, I have not to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I have been very into wilderness survival for a long time. I have, uh, if you've never watched survivor man, not one of the fake survival TV shows, this guy goes out and does it himself for a week and films it himself. Um, He's pretty much the guy that put a, put that genre of TV show on the map. But anyway, Les Stroud goes in and trains with locals before he goes and does his survival. Uh, you know, it's not something to be screwed with. It's not, nature doesn't give a fuck about you. Mm-mm. You're no different than the fucking ant walking on the ground when yeah. you're out in nature. And, you know, you've... you've mm, There's a lot of, as a society here, I can't, and I would say most first world countries, we've taken the nature or the survival out of nature. We don't have to think about surviving. And most people, I don't think, can survive in that situation. And I'm not saying I would either. I, I wouldn't survive. But it is, it's a humbling thought. Yeah. You know, so... If you, to anybody out there that wants to spend a lot of time in nature, if that is your goal, if you want to do something, prepare. Like, nature doesn't... Over-prepare. Over-prepare. Prepare Prepare and then prepare some more. Nature doesn't care about you and be humble in your preparation. Yes, 100%. Nature is the strongest force uh, on this planet in it's going to be here long after we're gone and it's going to take over very easily once we're gone. Um, this, this is kind of relatable, but maybe this, maybe it'll make the point a little bit, uh, more dramatic, I guess, to, to illustrate it to people. Um, and I don't want to get political with this, but we hear a lot about climate change nowadays, protecting the earth, protect our planet. It's not about protecting our planet. Planet's gonna go the on. Planet's gonna be planet's fine. gonna be fucking fine. It's protecting people. Yes, on the planet. It I shouldn't. Think, it should be called protect humans. Yeah, and not protect the planet. I think a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. They think that it is about us saving the planet, and it's not. No. it's about us saving ourselves. Here's because the, here's the thing: if we nuke the planet, the planet's gonna recover. Yep, it might We're take gone. It, it might take it a hundred thousand years. The only thing that's gonna kill our planet is when our sun inevitably explodes. Yeah. Which it's about halfway through its life cycle. So we got about 10 billion years left to go if At my least. memory serves. But, um, you know, there have been times on this planet where we didn't have, there was no oxygen in the atmosphere. Planet survived. Mm-hmm. Humans wouldn't. No. We, we could fill the atmosphere with carbon dioxide or all the, all the pollutants we want to. Planet's going to survive. Yeah. Life won't. Yeah. So I think that needs to be on another little rant here. That needs to be named something different, but I 100% agree. Anyway, be humble, be humble in nature. 100%. It doesn't care about you. No, it does not. Um, is that it? You, you uh, I will say, um, Rest in peace to Chris Crimmers and Lisa Ann Froon, who were gone way too early in their lives. Um, and like like Tyler said, if you're planning to go on vacation anywhere, uh, be humble and study, prepare, 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 and prepare some more. Um, don't assume. Assuming makes an ass out of you, you and me. Yep. And, and I want to second what Megan said about, you know, Rest in peace, these these two ladies. But on the same token, you know what you just said about if 
I like that you said if you're going on vacation or if you're going somewhere new, you didn't say if you're going into nature. Yeah. Because uh, that doesn't, it, I mean, even going to a different country, you don't know the customs, you don't know the exactly. rules. Um, I had a friend that traveled to, she is a firecracker. She has traveled to every continent. She's, she's barely five feet tall and she's traveled to every continent by herself. Uh, she's been around the world and she said there was only one country she ever was afraid in and wanted to get the hell out of. And then she said it was, um, oh hell, I don't remember. It was a my Myanmar or something like that. I need to see Google maps. But anyway, it was a Muslim country in Southeastern Asia and she was on a bus and apparently in that culture it is, um, the culture is for women to give their seat up to a man that wants it. And when this firecracker was on the bus. She was on the bus. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. It was Malaysia. Not Myanmar. It was Malaysia. The people of Myanmar are lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Anyway, it was Malaysia. Anyway, so she was on the bus. She was sitting beside this old lady on the bus, and this guy got on one of the old lady's seat, and she didn't want to give it to him. Uh, so he beat the shit out of this old lady right beside my friend. And she was like, get me the fuck out of this country. Uh, she said that was the only country she's been to where she felt like that and where she didn't feel safe. And so even if it's just the customs of where you're going or the potential, uh, like I know a lot of Americans get pickpocketed in Europe, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. Research where you're going and prepare for it. Yeah. Don't be a victim. 100%. I am so with you. Your safety is in your hands. Yes, it is. So. For the most part. Yeah, for the most part. You know, nature wants to kill you. Nature's going to kill you. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. On that note. Trivia with Tyler. I hope it's a lighthearted one today, Tyler. It actually kind of matches, and honestly, uh, <laughs> that that uh, little drop there kind of sounded a little quiet to me, so if you guys listening thought that was quiet, please email us and let us know so I can make those adjustments. Um, uh, I have a very, oh no, it, it went away. Hold on. I'll it's get it my back. fault it went away. No, 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 it's mine. Right. Um, as he pulls that up, um, do your own research as well on Lisan and Chris, uh, I've, like I said, literally spent two weeks researching and I barely scratched the surface. Yeah. Yeah. There, and I don't mean like I spent, you know, an hour every week. I have spent days worth of my life researching this and listening to podcasts and I'm still like just confused. Yep. 100%. Um, anyway, all right. Tyron, Tyron Nuggets. Similarly relatable. And it's not a happy one. The death of Lane Staley, the singer, the lead singer of Alice in Chains, was discovered when his accountants noticed that no money had been withdrawn in two weeks. They informed his former manager, who then contacted his mother, who called 911. That's so, horribly depressing. That is very depressing. So, But it did kind of go along today. A little bit. So, <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah. I need a drink. Uh, well, you got a drink. So we'll move on as soon as I get this back up. Oh, man. I forgot you to didn't put do the picture. I forgot to put the picture on you today. Oh, well. Oh, well. Mail time. That sounded really quiet, too. Yeah, it did. I wonder if it's just us. I wouldn't. Well, I think I normally keep the volume about here. Maybe okay. I, maybe, maybe I, that's why. Yeah, if I so behind the scenes, okay. guys, if I turn the volume up and down on my computer, it affects what we hear, but not what, not you, what hear. you hear. So I might have had it. I might have been listening to music and turned it down a little bit. Um, okay. So we'll. I know, right? I'm the old man. I turned my music down. <laughs> uh anyway, we ha actually have a mail time last week. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Morgan sent us an email. Um, she says, hi guys. Hi friend Morgan. Sending we Megan some good luck and vibes on her solo hosting tonight. Hope Tyler has a great time in Hawaii. I'm so jealous and wishing I was there sipping drinks on the beach. 
Cheers, friend Morgan. Morgan, thank you. I had a lovely time. Um, if you ever get the chance to go, go. It's worth it. So we're back this week, though. So we got we got our episode in just a week late. So sorry, cancer cat. You know. Yeah, is what it is. If I can find. <laughs> Final thoughts. So I even rearranged all these buttons. I think I mentioned it last time we were on uh, that I rearranged you put them in the right order. order, but it's been two weeks now and I forgot that I did that. So I still have to search. You'll get used to it. Yeah. One day, one day we're going to figure out this podcasting shit. And if not, as part of our charm. Yeah, sure. I regret putting water in this fucking whiskey. I have not tried it with water in it, so. Sorry, I shouldn't have said anything yet. I had already done it before you did it. Well, um, I feel like it took away some of the sweetness and made it a lot more floral, um, a lot more bitter. Um, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I much, much preferred it without the water being added. Well, I, um, I got a lot more burn this time so that was what i noticed immediately so normally the water takes away the burn but i would agree this added this added more burn to it as well overall not a great yeah, water experience. it really uh so i never really got the fruit that you were talking about it kind of dulled it out to me it took away the sweetness um increased the burn a little bit and then the wood flavor and the grainy flavor, you know, remained. Yeah. Um, Don't add water to it if you get this. Yeah, whiskey. yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't Drink suggest it that. It was, it was better. Neat. Um, one hundred percent better. Neat. Well, I guess I'll start. <sighs> I'll say that I'm very happy to have this uh, in my collection. A lot of that has to do with the exclusivity of it. Not necessarily the quality. I don't think every Joe Schmo, the whiskey collection, has a whiskey from Hawaii. Um, with that being said, though, this is not... Hmm, it's not good. It's not bad. Uh, it's not something I'm going to reach for especially considering I paid $54 for it. It's not something I'm going to reach for, you know, to impress anybody with. It's not something I'm going to reach for, frankly, very often just because of the exclusivity to it. I want to keep this. I've shared it with a, well, there's a couple people I would share it with if they ask, but, um, you know, I, I wouldn't just pull this off just because I don't know when I'll get another bottle of it. Um, as far as actually based on the flavor of it, it's probably a good mix in whiskey, in my opinion. Um, I just, it on its own, it's nothing special. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to think on my number, though. All right. Um, I agree for, for the most part this is fairly middle of the road it's definitely not like oh my god drop drop everything right now and go order this whiskey however i do think i like this more than you um because this is something that i would reach for regularly uh just to drink if it was more readily, readily available. Ava available um if this was uh, something I could find in just any old ABC store, it would probably be one of my, well, and then you have to look at the price too, so maybe not. Um, well, and I, uh, this one's a hard one to, to think in terms of price just because everything in Hawaii is expensive. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it. Would the price be lower here? Would it be more expensive since they have to ship it? Uh, I don't know. So I'm kind of trying if, to keep price out of it. If this was a whiskey that was readily available here and it was the under 40 price point, mm -hmm. 
it would be one of my go-tos. It would be one I grabbed very often and just drank neat I, without water. Dear God. Um, I loved the initial flavor. Um, for how rare it is, it, relatively being on the mainland, uh, and for the price point, I don't, I don't think this is worth uh, drinking like every weekend. It is one that I would save for special occasions just because it is going to be harder to get. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be a... Have I ever done a half rating? I don't know if I've ever given a half. I don't know, but I've settled on my number and it is five. Okay. Um, I will uh, also amend uh, the title that we did. I I think I'm just going to put the dis- the girls' names and the disappearance. Okay as the title um not to get too sidetracked there but i will also tell you guys for certain 100 percent, there is well a little less than half of the bottle left um unless this is asked specifically asked for by someone that they want to drink this whiskey again i will not dip into this bottle uh until 2023 Okay. Fair. Just flat out. The only reason for that is because if it does show up on the end of year special. Yep. I would like to have some. So. All right. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I, that, that is why I won't touch it. It's got nothing to do with the flavor or anything. It's just got to do with the exclusivity of it and the, you know, how hard it would be to get some yeah. more in freaking state that doesn't let you ship alcohol. <laughs> uh, Okay, I have my number. Okay. I was going to, it's a high six. It's not quite a seven. So I am going to go six and a half. I don't know if I've ever given a half rating before in all of our episodes. I am 99% sure you have. Okay. I can't remember if I have or not. So this is definitely a six and a half. It's not quite a seven. It's definitely not a six either. It's, it's high six. Um,. I'm looking here. Maybe you've not given I don't think I've ever given a half. I think I've made it a point. Yeah, you have. Oh, I have? Okay. Yeah, Bozeman uh, Bozeman Spirits Distilleries, 1889 Montana Bourbon, episode 51, five and a half. Mm. Five and a half. Okay. Oh, wow. I can't believe that you... I try really hard not to give half scores. Oh, you gave uh, uh, Wilderness Trail Single Barrel Select a five and a half, too. Okay. Um. Yep, so there's been a couple, not a many. A couple, but not many. This is one of the ones that it deserves a, a half score. It's uh, better than a flat six. Episode 58, Rua, single malt. You gave it a five and a half. Uh, Apparently, as Stranahan's, the episodes. Stranahan's, Sherry Cask, episode 52, eight and a half. As the episodes have gone on, I've been more liberal with giving half ratings. Yeah, so <laughs> that's all right. Um, some of them deserve uh, half, half a point. rating. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going with a solid five, making six and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. Well, uh, I'll I'll just say one thing. I left off of the uh, bit we were talking earlier about the trip to Hawaii. I had another whiskey while I was there that is not exclusive to Hawaii. Matter of fact, I have it in my cupboard for us to try. Okay. Um, but I obviously have tried it since I had it in Hawaii. But I just want to be, I'm not going to tell you which one. I'll tell you when we actually do that whiskey. You just want to be so honest. I just want to be up front with you guys. So. Nice. <clears throat> On that note, guys, I reckon what? that's wrapping it up for this yeah. episode. What are we at, out of curiosity? We're at an hour and 49 minutes. Okay, pretty long, but I tried to speed it up there at the end. Go look up all the theories yourself. I gave you the details. Now you go. You go be the sleuth. You decide. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Sorry again about last week. Um, But as long as Tyler doesn't go on vacation here, we should be good to go every week for the next until Tyler goes on vacation. Great. I can't go on vacation. (laughs) (laughs) No, I told you I'm ready. I'm ready to do a solo episode. I have full confidence in myself. Um, I can do a solo episode. I did leave off one thing when I was teaching you, but I wrote it down on this paper here for you. Okay. So. I still have full confidence, even with one thing I don't know. Well, yeah, I have confidence. That's a very easy thing. You just need to know it. (laughs) True. I mean, 
it's the <laughs> password to get into the computer. So, oh, that would have been really yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you kind of need it. But. I do. All right. Well, on that note, guys, thank you for sticking around. Please uh, visit us at whiskeyandwonder.com. Uh, subscribe, rate us, review us, send to your friends. We love you, and we hope that you don't drink and drive. Cheers. Cheers.